What's going on guys? It is Jams, and I am back after nine months of not making an entire video. You know why? Because I got bored with YouTube. But guess what? I'm back because I have nothing better to do at this very moment. And I thought that recording a video would be great. This video is pretty much to introduce those of you that are about to leave for US Navy boot camp in the upcoming months of June, July, August, etc. I just went through it back in January through March. January 23rd was my ship date. March 23rd was my graduation date, and now I'm here in South Carolina where the humidity and weather is unlike Ohio. However, I'm living up. So this video is pretty much going to be information on pretty much the start of boot camp to the end of boot camp in as much slash little detail as I can. It's kind of hard to fit eight weeks directly into one tiny compact video, but I'm going to do it. So pretty much you're going to you're going to go on your bus to the fabulous RTC Great Lakes in Illinois. And now, if you're not from areas that are cold and you're going in the winter, it sucks for you. If you're going in the summer, it's all right. So you're pretty much gonna be going on your bus after you fly to Chicago, Illinois airport. And when you go on the bus to get the Great Lakes, you're going to have uh, three RDCs come up present to you in order to introduce you and to check everyone in and make sure that everyone's there and accounted for. Accountability is huge in the Navy. You'll learn that. Anyway, after you arrive at RTC Great Lakes, you will go through what's known as your processing days, otherwise known as P-Days. P-Days suck, I'm gonna be honest with that. You're up for your first 48 hours, not really eating that much, and you're just going through every single possible check-in phase that you can. You're getting all of your uniforms issued, you're getting all of your clothing, you're bringing all the stuff that you brought with you, putting it into a box, and shipping that back home. And that's your pretty much last send off goodbye of almost everything that you brought with you. That includes your phone, any Game Boy, or whatever the heck you brought with you to play on the bus or in the airport or whatever. And you're just going to send all that back home, and you'll be left with pretty much your wallet and, I guess, some money, your ID, and that's it. And then that's when you're going to, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun going through the phases of, you know, getting issued your stuff and getting yelled at in order to go move with a person. If you're slow in boot camp, that's just kind of, you know, you won't be slow at the end. I promise. So during your P-Days, whenever you're done with that, which takes a while... You're going to move on to what's called the, I, I call it the indoctrination of a recruit because that's like weeks one, two, three, maybe into week four, mainly weeks one through three, where you're going to be introduced to your recruit division commanders who are going to be in charge of you throughout all of boot camp. These three are going to be the gods in term of your stay. They will be telling you every step of the way, every instruction, and if you are to fail to obey by these instructions word for word, you will get extra military instruction. That's a common term for more exercise. It's a great way to introduce recruits into a new lifestyle that involves both exercise and discipline. Most people when they go there, they're not gonna really be prepared for whatever they're gonna be thrown at. Most people, when they go there, they're not going to be prepared for what's thrown in their face. Whether it be the yelling, the exercises, anything really that you won't really get back home. Because it's not a nice place, but it is the place where recruits go to become sailors. And they make sailors. So during this phase, you're going to go through medical, you're going to go through dental, you're going to go through everything in order to get fully checked in and fit for full duty. And once that fit for full duty stamp is on your hard card, which is a track of your entire boot camp, once that fit for full duty stamp is on there, you can get exercise for discipline, which is okay, because that'll just teach people on when to mess up. And that's okay, because that'll just teach you that if you mess up, then there's gonna be reprimands. If you don't mess up, there won't be. It's that easy. So during weeks two, one and two, the recruit division commanders are going to decide who is going to be in charge of the division 
as in the recruit itself. There's gonna be your ARPOC, your AROC, your Master at Arms. There's gonna be different jobs like male petty officer and head PO, and all of which are gonna be in charge of the entire division of recruits, and you're gonna be a recruit yourself. So if you want to be in a leadership position and they ask for volunteers, go ahead, do it. Just know that whenever someone else below you messes up, it will be your fault. However, if you lead them correctly, not many things could be your fault. After these positions are filled, and then there's no more to be filled, you'll just be one of the extra guys that are part of there to be in their training and become fully fledged sailors. Now, one of the biggest thing that P the RDCs try to scare you about is being asmode. And the term asmo means to set you back either one week, two weeks, four weeks into a previous division, therefore extending your length at boot camp. Now, being as mode is a large fear, however, it is easily avoidable. If you do what you're told and you carry through with what you're told, and if you ever make a mistake, you own up to it. And you do not lie, you do not try to hold back, you do not try to comfort the lie, you own up to it and you take whatever reprimands there are and you just go with the flow. Go through with it, take the exercise, take the verbal reprimand, th take the yelling, take all of it and realize that you will not make that mistake again and that you will come out stronger than you were before when you made the mistake. During these weeks one through four, you also go through a lot of drill. I mean, marching, facing movements, uh, You'll have your AROC and ARPOC, which will be in charge of your marching. AROC is who calls the cadence, so if you like to sing the words left and right, or one and two a lot, that job's for you. ARPOC, you will call pretty much the facing movements left. You call the columns and where exactly your whole entire division is going to turn while you're marching, which is also really important. In week one or two, you will take your initial PFA which will be pretty much their determination on where you are physically. The Navy has a certain set physical standards that everyone must adhere to, and you must pass. The initial PFA itself, however, you do not have to pass. However, it is highly encouraged that you try your best and try to pass. You do have to get your run under 16 minutes and 10 seconds for males. And if you don't, then you're out. If you do though, you need to stay in. So work on your runtime if you're not good at running. So they keep you in shape, not only with the extra military instruction that you have whenever someone messes up, but also with something that's kind of fun. It's called bases. It is a series set of exercises at different stations that you'll be doing with your division and possibly the division ahead of yours that is two or four weeks ahead of you and you'll be doing with them. So these pretty much also keep you in some kind of good shape, as well as random interval of running throughout all of eight weeks. You'll start small, but then you'll intensely grow as you move on, because you should be able to build yourself as you move on with all of the exercises you will be participating in. The bases are fun, and you will also be doing something called strength and conditioning modules inside of your own uh, compartment, which is where you and your entire division will live. So you'll be doing your classic exercises where these ones are more or less an actual group physical training exercise other than a uh, beating of extra military instruction, which I don't really enjoy calling it a beating, although that is the term that some people use. It is a way of teaching discipline that comp compromises both the physical aspect and the mental aspect. Physical aspect because you're doing a lot of exercises that most people aren't used to doing on a daily basis, as in push-ups, 10 count bodybuilders, flutter kicks, six inches with your steel toe boots on, jumping jacks, pillow bridges, uh, running hill climbers. There's a there's a bunch of them. Oh, squats and uh, squats and arm circles are the best actually. So they're pretty fun. So they, they they keep you in shape enough, and that's all the physical aspect. However, the mental aspect is when it comes to you giving up on yourself and thinking that you cannot proceed with the exercises. But that's where you have to realize that, oh shit, this is real life. This is what I'm getting myself into, so I have to push myself farther to actually get through all of this. Some people might think it's easy, some people might think it's hard. Everyone has their own opinion because everyone comes from completely different backgrounds. 
and that's something that everyone has to understand. So when you put in 90 or so recruits that all come from different backgrounds into one place, you have to realize that they're going to find ways in order to make everyone not really individuals, but they're going to break everyone down as individuals. So everyone is the same. Same haircuts, same clothing you're wearing, same way to talk, same way to address uh, people of higher rank. And all of this is actually really important in the building aspect of becoming a sailor. So after you go through weeks one through four of, which is known as, which I still think is kind of the recruit indoctrination phase, you're gonna work work up to week five, week six, where you're gonna actually get to do a lot of cool stuff like uh, seamanship, line handling, marlin spike. A little bit later, you get to do firefighting and live fire, so you get to shoot pistols. Um, which is also a good way to work on your qualification for your pistol marksmanship ribbon, which is actually kind of cool to wear. I mean, ribbons are nice and all, but it's more or less the experience that you have behind each ribbon. So all, all of this that you do in these weeks, the firefighting is crucially important because when you are on a ship, it's just going to be you that's there to fight the fire. And when you're trying to go into port or come out of port it's going to be you handling the lines so you have to understand that everything that you learn throughout these entire eight week process you will utilize in the future and you will have to know for the future and pretty much every single thing that you learn will also help you possibly save someone's life one day not even your own life but another shipmate's life the boat's life the ship's life it all it, everything matters if in everything matters even if you think it doesn't so when you're practicing for graduation about week seven then it starts to get a little easier but the real test comes at the end when you go through battle stations can't really talk about it but you'll get to go through it and it is one of the best experience that you'll have in your entire life after that you get to have a phone call you get to tell your parents hey i did it i'm a sailor now and that you're, that, that's when you're officially recognized that as a sailor. And it is kind of one of the best, and it is the best feeling that you will ever get in your life. Because that's when you will officially lose your recruit ball cap that you've been wearing and sweating in and hating so much and get to wear the Navy ball cap that you've been staring at since day one that you got it. And after that, you get to go to your graduation at the end of the week see your family, go off and do whatever all day because you'll have leave that day. And it's really nice. However, if you are being stuck, it, there's a place called the temporary housing unit in which that some sailors that need to stay due to paperwork will stay there. Therefore, they're actually going to get their liberty after graduation. Also, if you're going to your apprenticeship school right after boot camp, then it is right across the street from RTC Great Lakes you'll just have your liberty for that entire weekend. So I hope this video is kind of a uh, instructional. I'll try and do a more in-depth of each stage in order so people can understand what each stage broken down will be. This has been kind of just like an overall view so that people will have kind of understanding before they ship out and go. So yeah and i wish all of you that are going to be leaving for boot camp good luck and that uh, you can make it if you set your mind to it anyone can i did my shipmates on the other side of this wall did everyone here that i am with in my a school did so you can too just put your heart to it put your mind to it and don't give up this is jams and i'm out